in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. So welcome to St Mary Barnes on Sunday the 15th of November for our evening service. This is a service of healing and wholeness. Uh, when we gather physically in church, we are also able to offer the ministry of laying on of hands and anointing with oil. Sadly, we can't do that at the moment, but we are still very much able to pray for one another and for that broad sense of healing and wholeness, of that interconnection of the physical, the spiritual, the emotional, uh, the social uh, well-being and connectedness for which we pray. So we may wish in this time to pray for ourselves and for our needs, as much as for the needs of particular individuals amongst our families, friends and neighbourhood, or indeed for the needs of the wider world. This is a precious time in which we can bring all of these concerns before God. You may wish to light a candle as a sign of that prayer. This order of service can be found on the St Mary Barnes website uh, and uh, do please join in with the service um, as you feel most appropriate. We meet in the presence of God who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. We come to our prayers of penitence. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Friend of sinners, you bring hope in our despair. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Healer of the sick, you give strength in our weakness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Destroyer of evil, you bring life in our dying. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by God's Spirit, and raise you to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect. Heavenly Father, you anointed your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and with power, to bring to us the blessings of your kingdom. Anoint your church with the same Holy Spirit, that we who share in his suffering and victory may bear witness to the gospel of salvation through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So we come now to our reading from Scripture, and today this is taken from the Gospel of St Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Well, it's a beautiful parable that Jesus tells, um, so brilliantly interweaving the familiar of everyday life uh, with the most profound of truths and with that sense of humour about uh, the judge being worn out by the persistent widow. 
But very clearly the message is, as it says right at the start, is about how we are to pray always and not to lose heart. Now you may say, oh, well, that's easy for Jesus to say, um, but uh, if you're like me, we don't pray always. Um, and I can easily lose heart, uh, especially when prayer seems uh, to be unanswered. Why should I persist in that way? So we might like to reflect in the uh, time that will follow. There'll be a bit of time after this with some music playing to reflect. You might like to reflect on um, what you have prayed for recently. And uh, has your prayer been answered? And if so, perhaps it's an opportunity to give thanks to God for that. Or maybe you feel that it has not been answered. And do you feel able to persist in that prayer, despite that sense of frustration? So the heart of this story is about the persistence of uh, the widow and um, how um, uh, she follows in the footsteps of many in Scripture who do indeed persist and uh, uh, often succeed in uh, hearing God afresh, indeed in God doing a new thing for them. Um, and um, we even think of Jesus persisting in prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane and throughout his ministry in the way that St Paul persisted in prayer for the young churches that he had established. And um, there's clearly something essential here in about coming close to God. The persistence is not a simple repetition of the same old thing. It is being at one with God and being trusting in his response and spending time in his company. And Jesus is saying that if the unjust judge gives in to persistence, how much more will the God of justice, who wants to give us good things, how much more will he respond to our prayers? So this begs some questions we might like to ponder on now. What uh, is it that you are expecting God to do in prayer? Are they, is it reasonable what you're expecting God to do in prayer? Or what are you expecting the result of prayer to be? Share that with God in this time. And are you able to trust God that he will hear your prayer, that he is hearing your prayer? And the parable ends with Jesus saying, uh, yet will the Son of Man, that's himself, find faith. So this is, comes back to a matter of faith and trust. And in our uh, the relationships that we value most, those we pray that we do have with particular family and friends, at the heart of that is always a sense of trust and faith. How much more is that important in our relationship with our Heavenly Father. So we'll have some moments of um, music now in which to reflect on those questions um, as we um, also reflect on that parable.
So we come now to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. The response to Lord hear us is Lord graciously hear us. Holy God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we make our prayer to you, saying, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant to all who seek you the assurance of your presence, your power and your peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant your healing grace to all who are sick, that they may be made whole in body, mind and spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant to all who minister to the suffering wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Hear us, Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And as we pray now for healing and wholeness, I'm going to mention one or two people and issue specifically in prayer. You may wish to do the same in your prayers. And then there'll be some other music that I will play to help us with this time of prayer. So the first of the prayers are from our prayer board, which we now have in church. We have these little prayer request cards, which uh, are on a board in church. And so we pray for Mary. And we also pray for Cynthia, Cynthia Garvash, who is the beloved sister uh, of the person who left this prayer. We're asked to pray for Cynthia's soul as she uh, passed away on Friday. And we're also asked to pray for all the service men and women who died for us. And we remember all of them at this particular time of remembrance. Within our church congregation, we remember David Delaforce, who is unwell at this time. And we also give thanks for the life of Jackie Northam, who died this morning in Taunton Hospital, a much loved member uh, former member of this congregation. And we pray for all at this time who have been devastated by the coronavirus, those who have been infected themselves, those whose communities and livelihoods have been affected. We pray for a healing for them and a healing and return of wholeness for our societies as a whole. So we continue with our own prayers of he for healing.
Let us pray. Sovereign God, you are gentle and merciful. Your anointed son brought healing to those in weakness and distress. He broke the power of evil and set us free from sin and death, that we might become partakers of his glory. Remember in your glory all for whom we pray, and in the fullness of time complete your gracious work, that we may be restored in your image, renewed in your love, and forever praise your great and holy name. Amen. As we look for the coming of the kingdom, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion. So in a moment, I'll come to the final words of blessing uh, and uh, some final music. Thank you for joining in this act of worship this evening. I pray that uh, we will all grow deeper in our uh, relationship with God, that we can bring those unanswered prayers back to him, that we may persist in trust and in faith. This is a week where I felt a real answer to prayer with uh, John, who was a homeless man living here in Barnes, uh, was um, able to get help and has now got new accommodation and his life is now set on a new path thanks to the help of many in this local community and with specialist support from the Vineyard Centre and others. So we give thanks where prayers are answered and so often they are answered and we don't recognise it. So I give thanks for that. May God keep you in all your days May Christ shield you in all your ways. May the Spirit bring you healing and peace. And may God, the Holy Trinity, drive all darkness from you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.